Hello, it's your Arch Mage Feng here. Um, just doing a follow up on the Wizards and Warriors thing I did many, many years ago. Um, sort of a conclusion type thing, really. Ah. Well, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the, the fact that I've missed out the Game Boy version. Well, to be honest, I never really played it. Um, well, I've played it about twice. Never really enjoyed it. It's sort of like the first Wizards and Warriors, but if you take out all the magical items and half the levels out, and make it a little bit more difficult and that's the game really it wasn't really appealing for me it was something to play on the long travels that I would have sitting in the back of my mother's car but apart from that it wasn't really a game that I would play as much as I would play the Nintendo versions of um, so that's the reason why I haven't really covered that uh, I am however could also do a conclusion on the three games that I have covered, so let's get on with that. So moving on to number one, uh, I think it's actually the best of the three. Uh, the reason is, is because it's a good old fashioned adventure, it's got your magical items, it's got your bosses, it's got your bad guys, it's you know, it's just nice and simple, works, and yeah, it's works really well just makes it a great game. Uh, if anything, I suppose that Infinite Continues is a bit annoying and uh, the flying enemies were a bit annoying and maybe the fact that the night guard and the, the door to the next level, to, to the boss level was a bit, I think, I mean, if you're a knight, wouldn't you just duel the other knight? Uh, but, uh, all in all, it's a solid game, and I like it. Going on to Wizard Warriors 2 Iron Sword. Definitely the worst of the three. I'm not saying it's a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, but I am saying it's the least favourite because it's just... It's just like copy and paste them badly, if that makes sense. Um, it's just... It's... Fight the elements, which has been done to, which has been done to death in most adventure games. Most RPGs has been done to death, and on top of that, it's the the spell scrolls you get are, and it's just rinse and repeat. It's get this item to get to the next part of the level, and get the spell to defeat the elemental fiend, and then same thing, but for the next same thing for the next level, same thing, and blah blah blah. blah. And then finally you get to Ice Fire Mountain and you think, okay, well, I've got a few continues, I might be able to do this. And then suddenly just take the continues after you, like, a, like it's just like, yeah, we don't want you to win this. And I found that, well, I found that cheap, to be honest. And, it, yeah, it was just the worst of the freak. And, <laughs> just to put it bluntly, then we look at Wizard Warriors 3. This would have been my favourite game, ex except for one thing. Lack of enemies and lack of bosses. What I mean is, you can count the bosses on one hand. You've got the dude guard in the underworld, which you can't defeat until you've got the level 3 knight's ability anyway. You've got the monster guard and the thief statues. You've got the worm monster guard and the wizard statues. You've got the knight guard and the... No statues, you've got the three headed dragon, and you've got Malco at the end. That's it. Twice as many bosses in the first Wizard Warriors. The guild stuff was good though. I think that sort of gave it a bit more of a playability, if that makes sense, because you think, oh yeah, okay, so I've got this ability, maybe I'll try hard, maybe I'll just push for the next ability, see what I get. And it makes you want to keep going in that respect. It is just the fact that there's a lack of combat really in it. I spent more time jumping on platforms and doing guild tests and stuff like that as opposed to actually combating enemies. I, mean, I, spent, I, spent, more, I spent more time combating the bosses. So I found that to be, again, not a bad game. In fact, a terrific game, especially with the guild quest, because that's what keeps you going and keeps you wanting to play the game, because you want to get the next statue and you want to get do the next test and you want to get the next ability just to see what you can do. Um, if, 
for the future. Uh, if they were to make a future game, I suppose they'd probably try and make laser sword. I'd like to see it. Uh, 3D technology and stuff like that. Maybe they'll just go for graphics to get the, like, the story and the gameplay. Although there wasn't really much gameplay. I mean, let's be honest. When we played with Kuros and he was swinging that sword about, it looked, it, looked, it looked like he was having a fit. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see him... I'd like to see Wizard Lord do like Wizard Warriors one, but with like guild stuff as side quests, so you can play as like a wizard and a thief and all that, and just tackle the game differently. Uh, it doesn't have to be an RPG; it can still be an adventure game and still have that uh, mechanic in there. Uh, with Laser Sword, though, I'm, it sounds weird, but I'd like to see like a cyberpunkish style to it. You know, Kuro, because then the Wizard Warriors 3, yeah, we'll spoil a 20 year old game, but Wizard Warriors 3, you know, they go in the future, and maybe like Mako's got like 10 years before Kuros, and next thing you know, he's the head of a big mega corporation. Kuros is a, has no clue what's going on, has to you know, use all his you know, relearned abilities and stuff like that, and you know, fight this group, fight this, bring this evil corporation to his knees. And stuff. Oh, no, no, I think that would be cool, and. I know space opera would be good as well, but I don't know why. I'd just love to see like a cyberpunk setting for some reason. Maybe I'm just mad. Anyway, this concludes the conclusion of my uh, Wisdom Warriors uh, retrospective. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for my next.